the big calls on all the big races. Welcome along to Watershout. Thanks for joining us here. This programme is brought to you by The Racing Post and it's sponsored by Betfred. Just a quick reminder before we start that we do want your involvement. This is a like, subscribe, share and comment show. So get involved, be interactive and we'll be in touch with you too. There isn't a better time to sign up to Racing Post Members Club. You can get your first two months for just £9.99. Check this out. Are you ready to take your passion for horse racing to the next level? With Racing Post Members Club, you gain exclusive access to the best racing insights, analysis and tools. Immerse yourself in award-winning content from interviews with the sport's biggest stars to race previews and behind-the-scenes features. Get the inside track with early access to the Racing Post digital newspaper from 9pm in the evening and daily selections from our expert tipsters. Racing Post Members Club is your ultimate ticket to the thrilling world of racing. Subscribe today and pay just £9.99 per month for the first two months with the code SUMMER. See the link in the video description for more information. Terms apply. We've got a cracking weekend of racing. Actually, I was looking through it thinking, wow, group one, group one, group one. Then I got to five um, in England and Ireland over the weekend. Kiels, it's phenomenal. You love your handicaps, but it's, it's group one's galore. Oh, well, it's mad. I mean, obviously, Irish Champions Weekend is fantastic. We've got top class racing there. We've got, a, we've got the Sprint Cup at Haydock as well. Dan, there are some fantastic handicaps. Uh, on on all the cards in uh, in Britain and Ireland, so uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, I don't know how I'm going to get through it, to be honest. I'm, I'm thinking about I might just have a few very small multiples and stick them all together and sit back and enjoy it. I'm, I'm the sort of punter who likes to get my bets on before the racing starts, and I can't see me having serious bets on all the horses that are in my head at the moment. You know what I mean? Well, because so there's, so yeah, there's so many of them. There's so many races. You look at them, and I'm, I'm one of, I, I look at them and see a set of prices. I see something I like, you know, most of the time. So you've got to be careful. And form-wise, um, you've been in pretty good order, haven't you, yeah, the last okay, month or so? Yeah, really OK. Good order. I mean, I had a 10 to 1 winner uh, at Chester opening the proceedings in, in, in last Saturday's column, and it all went absolutely pear-shaped from then onwards. Uh, but that kept me afloat. So, yeah, not been doing too bad. So, fingers crossed, it carries on. Well, it's just you and I in the studio. But Johnny Deneen from Ireland is live with us on Skype. Johnny, how are you? Very good, Emma. Very good, yeah. Looking forward to the weekend. It, it is cracking stuff, though. It really is. It's, I suppose it's the... Like the what do you what do you call it the um, the flat equivalent of the Dublin Racing Festival in Ireland, really, isn't it? I think it is anyway. That's, mm. It's that kind of a uh, quality stuff like Group One, as you say, Group One after Group One, and good good handicap. It's good racing for like any any kind of a person that wants any interest in horse racing. There is anyway here. Even the English stuff is good this weekend. It, it's good all round. And is it enough to actually entice you to go flat racing? No, but that one, like, I, don't, I, I don't go to a lot of jumps meetings either, so I just kind of got out of the habit of going to the races, to be honest, but uh, no, I, I would go to this kind of stuff at the same time. It, it is really, really good, good flat racing. And it has been absolutely gorgeous weather-wise here in England. It doesn't shine the sun in Ireland like it does, but has it been quite nice with you? Oh, it has. I mean, the, the, the temperatures are up into the late 20s and you're heading for 30. I think the ground is going to be quick i'd say boat play no matter what kind of water they put on it it's still going to be pretty quick i, I i'd be i'd be factoring like that soft ground horses won't be winning these meetings in ireland anyway mm. and also joining us on the program is is matt from betfred how are you how's your week been have you been busy enjoying a bit of sunshine all right well just what, what you just said i actually went to i was lucky enough to go to ireland this week for, for, for a day and uh, the sun nearly popped out it was cloudy <laughs> it nearly popped out but no I was really lucky. I've been to Ballydor this week, looking ahead to the Betfred St. Ledger, spoke to Ian O'Brien. Honestly, what a place that is. Absolutely fantastic. Just seeing the horses there, and all the three year olds, all the horses out. Neymar, 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 Neymar. Absolute joy uh, to be there this week. So, yeah, I've been very, very fortunate. Also, Jack Dawes Castle as well. So it's been a heck of a week, and uh, what a way to finish it with this weekend of racing. Is that the first time you've been to Ballydoyle? As you say, it is a military operation, isn't it? Run to absolute perfection. It's incredible to watch it is yeah as soon as you put to the gates the security goes and you go through I me mean, it's about 800 acres i think it is and i say it's absolutely pristine manicured lawns hedges and uh, ain't no brand you can literally set your watch by and the most fascinating thing and i know people said it before is he knows every single member stable staff by the first name it was just a privilege to be there watch them go past and uh, talking to each and every one of them by name and see asking how every horse as he goes past it it was absolutely sensational 
Good stuff. We'll be hearing from Matt throughout the programme. He'll be uh, filling us in with with prices. Aidan, great to have you with us on the programme. It's a very big, big weekend for you in store. Yeah, pleasure, Emma. Thanks very much. Um, yeah, big weekend, important weekend for us. Um, the weather looks beautiful and hopefully the ground will be lovely for everybody. So it's a um, weekend to look forward to, really. I'm not going to mention every runner because we'd be here for a very long time, but I'm just going to skim through and touch on uh, some of the more fancied runners and, and the bigger weekends where there's a lot of Group 1s. Um, we'll start off with Diego Velasquez in, in, in the Juvenile Stakes on Saturday at Leopardstown. Son of Frankel and really quite impressive on his debut at the Curra. Yeah, we, we always loved him. Um, he's been, he'd been working lovely before the Curra. He, he was very green at the Curra. He didn't really travel. Um, uh, he was kind of off the bridle, behind the bridle the whole way and really only got going the last 50 yards, but still won very easily. Um, we think of his greenness because he, he's, he's uh, at home, he, he's a good traveller and he's straightforward, but um, we've been happy with him since. We, we think a mile will suit him. Um, and no, looking forward to seeing what he's going to do now again, uh, Emma. Looking forward to the matron stakes, Meditate obviously has a bit of form to find with Tahira, but they don't just see it all about Tahira this race. Yeah, sure. Listen, it's all those races. Uh, they're, co they're competitive. Leperstown is a, can be a tricky place. Uh, it can be tactical, and it's going to depend on what way the race will fall, I suppose. Um, she's a very good filly. Dermot's filly is a very good filly. Um, um, our filly had form with her last year. I wasn't far behind her, and her form tailored off a little bit this year. So we, we've given our filly a break, and uh, she's slowly built back up. Uh, Rachel, uh, uh, um, uh, Brett has been riding her work, and... Uh, uh, she's working in blinkers recently, and and uh, and um, that has been going well. So, um, we're hoping that it might spark her up again. Um, we hope that around the bend at Leperstown might suit her. And uh, really, we're hoping that she run a good race. But listen, Dermot's filly is is very good, and she she will be tough to beat. But sometimes, as you say, you need luck in running, particularly in these types of races at Leopardstown. It's not always just quite as simple as it might look on paper. We'll move on to the champion stakes, August Rodan, and also Luxembourg, of course, last year's winner in the race. Yeah, he's very well as well. Uh, we kind of used him a little bit into King George. We rode him forward, and he's kind of a, a mile and a half horse that kind of has enough pace over a mile and a quarter, but he's not a mile and six horse. So ground was a bit soft that day, and... He, he took it up probably early and uh, still ran a very good race. But we think back to a mile and a quarter will suit him well. We're very happy with his work uh, since the last day. Um, and uh, we think and hope he should run a very good race. And then Augustus Road then obviously um, had a disappointing run in, in, in Ascot. We, we think maybe a lot of things were wrong. Maybe the soft ground, he was trapped wide and he flew over and a whole lot of stuff. There, there could be an awful lot of things that, that um, contributed to the disappointing run. And uh, when Ryan felt him, Coming off the bridle very early, he, it wasn't ever like him, so he didn't take a chance and he took him out of the race quickly where he could have put him in the race and, and, and uh, been very hard on him and, and it might have left a scar on him, but he didn't do that. He, he did the right thing. He, he uh, knew it wouldn't be the wrong thing to take him out of the race. Um, we're very happy with him since. Uh, uh, Rachel writes him in our work and Andrew's in charge of him and uh, everyone, obviously other people, everyone around him is happy with him uh, since. So we're looking forward to seeing him run. He's He's drawn inside at uh, this time where he was drawn outside in, in, in Ascot. It's back to a mile and a quarter and Ascot's a mile and a half and back on nice, hopefully fast ground where Ascot was soft ground. So a lot of different things, uh, a lot of, he's not flying. There's an awful lot of things uh, have changed that, that could, um, we, you could see a different Augustus Rodan, but we're very happy with him since. He's got a funny profile, hasn't he? Because he's got two outstanding runs, obviously winning the English Derby and, and the Epsom Derby, and then two sort of completely flummoxing performances either side of it. Uh, I suppose um, you might be talking about the, 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 the guineas in soft ground, and he got killed when he came out of the gates, and then he got trapped in a pocket. So oh, there, there was good, we felt good enough reasons for his very mm. disappointing run. And then uh, I think after that, he went to Epsom and he won. And then after that, he went back to the car and a uh, horse got injured in front of him at the Curra coming down the hill and he kind of got left there three furlongs down and then he, he, he just got he just got slipped into second gear all the way up the straight, really. Um, you can see him, if you go back and see, he was pricking his ears all the way to the line. So, but he still won. And then I suppose the other disappointing one you, you said there is the King George. And, and we, we feel there was reasons for that and, and we feel that there was uh, uh, legitimate reasons that hopefully that won't happen again. Yeah, let's hope so. Well, then on Sunday at, at the Curra, we'll skip through a few more. Jackie O in the, in the uh, Blandford Stakes. Yeah, very happy with her. She's progressed with every run this year, and uh, she is 
progressed again since her last run. Um, she all her best form is with a little ease in the ground. Mm. She she is sound, but um, the ground will be different than her best form is on. But she is sound and she is working very well and she has progressed. But the ground is a little bit of an unknown for her. Quick word on the Antarctic in the Flying Five. What about the drop back to the minimum distance here? In, in at the Curra, yeah, yeah we, we ran him. Uh, I used to say this, we ran him in, in, in York. Um, uh, we knew that he, he needed to run badly, we know her as to run him. Um, uh, we knew that we didn't have much time to, to wake him up, so that's why he went there. But he ran okay. Uh, Ryan went forward on him, but he got tired. Uh, we think he's much better since then, but we think there's more to come from him. And whether we will get it out this year or not, but we, if not, we, we think next year. But we're, we're happy with him since York, and we think he'll leave that run a good bit behind him. Quick words about the Moigler, Ylang Ylang, um, two from two and looks really quite quite a, an interesting horse for the future. Yeah, we usually would go to the debutant with a horse, a filly on the way to the Moigler, but we didn't with her, we gave her a little bit of time. Uh, um, Dean had been riding on Roger, uh, so um, uh, everyone's very happy with her. She has done well since our last run. It, it, it will be different. I'm not sure she'll get a lead, but if she did, we'd be delighted. But she might have to go forward again. She is straightforward. Uh, she handles fast ground. She, she has pace, and uh, obviously it's a different test for her. Uh, so we're hoping that she runs a big race. City of Troy is going to be a very short price in the national stakes, and he looks hugely exciting on everything we've seen so far. Yeah, we think he is too. Uh, obviously, um, we would usually have given him another run between now and. Uh, a new market, but we had other horses to take those slots, so he hasn't run. He's he's done very well uh, physically. He has uh, got stronger and heavier, uh, but he is in good form. Uh, we think this will be another lovely run for him, but it's nearly like a run back from a break for him because he has done very well physically. Uh, Dean rides him in, in all his work and is very happy with him. So, um, yeah, no, we're looking forward to seeing him run. He loves good ground. He's a good mover. Uh, he's an unusual horse. He's a big, long stride. And when you ask him to quicken, the stride gets longer. So um, it, it, it'll be interesting looking at him. Do you think he could be potentially very, very good? He could, yeah, he could be. Who knows? Like he could be a, a, a like a, he could be a triple crown type of horse because he could have pace enough, obviously, for a mile as a three-year-old, and he could get a mile and a half, and he could even get further. So he's a horse that you could dream about. But things have to go right for him. Uh, so we'll we'll get him started again in this race, and then see where we go. But he, he could be a very exciting horse. Brilliant. Then we move on to the Irish ledger. Kiprios, I mean, I guess you're just over the moon that you've got him back because it's been a difficult time. Yeah, I didn't think he would come back at all, really. Um, there's a lot of people um, uh, to we be thankful for getting him back. Um, Eamon put in a lot of time with him more than anybody. And uh, obviously, then you have John and Ger and Jack and uh, Shane, uh, Vanessa, uh, Eamon, uh, Patrick rides him every day. Uh, Rachel rides him in her work. Um, Oh, there's so many people we didn't think he would come back, but Eamon kept uh, persevering and, and he got him back. Um, never thought it would happen, to tell you the truth. Um, um, so, like, we had to be very careful with him bringing him back. Um, so, he's ready to run, start off now. So, it will be easy. It will be interesting. It's a it's a start back run for him. And uh, hopefully, he will start back and he'll pull up okay and, and we'll be able to go forward with him after, after the race. But, like, obviously, it's going to be very interesting to see what he does do. Uh, he's moving well and he seems in good form, but uh, it's not. I, I didn't think it was possible that he would make it back. But like, obviously, he's another day to go, but it looks like at the moment that he could make it, uh, could make it on Sunday. Obviously, a, a very, very talented horse. How fit is he to do himself justice, to be favourite, justify and warrant his place at the top of the market in such a good, you know, good race? Yeah, I would imagine he will have to improve a lot. It's his first run in a long time and, and what he went through was horrendous, really. Um, it, uh, it's, I can't believe he, he is at the stage he's at. Uh, he, he definitely going to have to improve a lot. He, he's a horse that sits in second gear the whole time, all his life, in all his work. He, he, he'll just flap along beside no matter what horse you put him with, and, and, and he's still the same. And, and he, he, he's very unusual. Anybody that rides a horse will know what a horse flapping means, but he'll flap the whole way. He never goes out of it. Um, so you don't know what he's going to do or how much is in there. But um, listen, Tom... Uh, reads his heart and he's very happy with his level of fitness but you, you don't know until you get out there and start him. Uh, Patrick riding him, uh, Rachel riding him in the work, they're all very happy with him to, to get him started but as a start back uh, so um, um, it's going to be very interesting but uh, yeah listen, it, it, anything is possible. Um, Ryan had to ride him obviously, uh, 
the filly is in good form, but the ground is fast and she's way better on soft ground, you know. So, listen, it, for us, it's just uh, going to be very interesting and we're so delighted to have him back and hopefully uh, we'd be able to go on from there, really. If he was to run well, um, would you go the route of the Cadran again, of course, the race he won last year, or, or maybe chance your arm um, on Champions Day? Yes, uh, listen, all them things are open to him. Like last year we said that after the Cadran we go to the... Um, the arc at the end, but it just goes to show what things, the way the whole horse's future can change. Um, so, um, listen, I'm afraid even to think of it, but obviously, it is obviously you're thinking of it. You say the arc is definitely going to be too much for him, you would imagine. Then he'd have the cadre, and then he'd have the, the your uh, staying race in, in us, but they would be two of his probably main looking ones if if he ran and ran respectable and came back okay. And, uh, like if 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 all those things did happen again. But like obviously, until you see it, you can't believe that's going to happen, really. Mm. Quick word on continuous uh, for the ledger next weekend at Doncaster. Yeah, he, he's very well. Uh, Aoife rides him out all the time. Uh, Rachel rides him in her work. Andrew's in charge of him. Um, they're all very happy. He worked this morning and uh, he, he's uh, he's lovely. Uh, he's doing everything very well. Uh, Ryan was very happy with him in in uh, in. Um, in York, uh, he had a, he had a break before York, and we felt that he was going to come forward from York, you know. So, but like like I say, he worked this morning, and, and we were very happy with him. So, uh, it, another horse is going to be very interesting. I, I remember Ryan riding him as a two-year-old, and, and I said to him like, "How far would this horse stay?" And he he said to me that he thought he would stay very well because the stallion he was by, and he said in Japan those hard cries stayed very well. So, it's going to be interesting. Obviously, it's a different. Uh, it's a different distance completely far and bust. Uh, uh, very happy with him at the moment. Uh, Emma. A quick word finally, then I'll let you go on, on Paddington. How's he after York and what's uh, what's the plan with him? Yeah, he's, he's very well. He's, he's got very fresh. We, we gave him a couple of easy weeks, but this morning there with Adrian, he jumped out over a uh, uh, jumped off at a gallop walking back, so that'll tell you how, how fresh he's gone. So he's, his work is going to have to start building back up again and, and the plan is to go to Ascot with him, either the champion or the Queen Elizabeth, but I think at the moment that the lads, it looks like that they might be favouring the, the Queen Elizabeth with him, but he, he's in great order. A, Adrian rides him every day and is very happy, and Andrew's in charge of him. So, uh, yeah, so that, that's where we are at the moment. He can't believe, I suppose, it's so long since he ran, really. <laughs> Aidan, thank you so much for your time. Um, great chat about your, your, all your runners this weekend and about the future. Good luck, and we'll talk to you again soon. Thank you. Appreciate it, Emma. Thanks very much. Fascinating thoughts there from trainer Aidan O'Brien. He's got uh, some big, big chances over the course of the next couple of days. And interesting, as always, to hear him and great to have him on this programme. OK, let's uh, get the action underway. Haydox 150, it's a group three over a mile. And this could be an opportunity for light infantry to get his head in front. Matt, how do they bet? Yeah, it could well be. And obviously, he is, he is a short price favourite. Down into group three company after applying his trade, of course, in top company. He's seven to four. Uh, Chind, I thought, missed a golden opportunity in the Hungerford Stakes. He's at four to one for Richard Hannon. The one that I like is zoology. I know James Bergson has always thought a lot of this. They have waited a bit to COVID early on in the season. And I thought it was very unlucky not to win uh, the Jersey Stakes. So he's back up to a mile. He gets weight off them as well. An interesting stable switch. They left James Bergson and gone to Harry Eustace. So I'll be with the three-year-old zoology against the older horses. But as you say, a chance for light infantry to, to get a bit of a confidence boost and maybe look at them big group one targets at the back of the season. He's an incredibly consistent horse, um, Kiels, that hasn't got his head in front recently. But to be fair, he's running group ones He has run in group runs. He runs in group third runs a lot. Anne, I've backed him, I've, I've, I've backed him for, for several of them. In fact, in fact, I backed him for the lock-ins when he was seventh. I backed him in the Queen Anne and I backed him at Dover last time. I, I do like him because I think he's got the ability to run into the frame in group races. But I also think that he's a horse that likes to follow rather than lead. And they, they tried sort of, different tactics tried with different him, tactics didn't they? With him. They tried different tactics with him at Ascot in the Queen Anne and they made the run in. Mm. And it seemed to me that he was quite happy to let a couple of horses go past him and then start to run on again <laughs> at the end. And that worries me a little bit. And if you look at his form, the two times since July 2022 that he's dropped out of Group 1 company actually coincide with the two worst runs uh, in that spell. Uh, so he gets beat by Muta Sarbeck very easily at Newmarket and he, and he had that race uh, abroad. Uh, when he was only 6 of 20, his joint favourite. So just a little bit worried about him on that score, a little bit worried about him because Connections have always thought he didn't want fast ground. They, the only time he was down to run on good to firm ground, he was taken out. Now, uh, it was actually pretty fast the first time he ran, uh, he, he ran behind Inspiral in the pre-Jacques in August 22, despite what he says 
uh, on the form, so he's probably okay on it, but I just, I just question whether he wants to win. You know, I really do. I think he's got that much ability. So I'm opposing him. I can see the case for Zoology, but Zoology's form still is nowhere near as good as the peak form Sir Busker. Now I know he's got, he's got, a, he's coming back from a break, but um, he has run well fresh in the past. He's won races at Royal Ascot. He was, you know, he won a Group Two last year at York. Finished third to Bayid in the International. I know it was a distant third, but Bayid was on a completely different level, wasn't he? Mm. And the one thing about Sebuska, he's always like fast ground, he's always looked like a strong pace. We've got Point Linus in here, we've got Chindit who can go on, uh, and uh, a Misty Grey that can go on as well. So I think we're going to get a good solid pace, fast ground. If he's fit and well after a break, he didn't fare too well and made that earlier in the year, but plenty of horses don't. Uh, he's been given time to come back to himself. If he does, he's got conditions that are perfect for him. Johnny, are you with or against light infantry? Look, light infantry to me looks like a horse that wants soft ground. He's by Fast Company. He was withdrawn in Ascot in a race there last year because of the quick ground. He's a lot of place form, which I'd be worried about. He's, he has solid form in the context of a race like this, but I, I don't know. I, I wouldn't trust him myself to, uh, at, at the price he's 13 to 8. Regal reality is in it. He's an 8 year old. He's exposed. Um, that horse that Paul mentioned, Sir Busker. Definitely a runner. He's, he's off for six months though. Like you, you're kind of taking and trusting he's going to be ready to go. Um, Zoology, to me, two runs ago he was running the maiden in Suddle. I think he's step up and a bit to get up to this grade. Maybe I'm not so sure. The one I was going to go with was Chindit. Uh, um, I thought he was around, he was in around 92 with James Doyle taking over. Look, and I've said he win if if, if he consents to run properly. I could see him winning, but I do think he's a rock solid each way. And I'd be amazed if he's not in the first three and would have been a lucky might even win the race. But but he'd be the one I'm gonna go for Chindit at at in around four and a half to one each way. Okay, interesting stuff. Looks like we're all going against uh, Light's infantry. Over to Leopardstown we go for the matron stakes, a group one for Phillies and Merrick two forty five, where Matt Dermot World has a short price favourite. Yeah, he certainly does. I think looks like this prize is going back to Rosewell House. He's obviously got Tahira, the, the heroine that she is, so she is odds on. At around five to six, and then he's also got homeless songs in there at fifteen to two. Didn't quite build on the you know season. We've only seen her once this campaign, but you know it's too soon to be writing her off. Same price as Rinsk, recent Group Two winner at fifteen to two, and it's ten to one. But yeah, it looks like it, it's Dermot Wells to, to win. To hear her, she's been an absolute star. She's five to six. Just won at a massive price. Uh, Cadu Bell on every three starts. Won the first two. Second, uh, won a listed from listed company second title, and then. Completely bombed out at Ascot last time out in favour. I don't think that was her running. And Chelsea's a massive price. If she'd come here on the back of those other two runs, it'd be a bit shorter. So I thought she might be a little of each way interest, but she'll have a work for out to so those colours of two. Well, Johnny, I feel like we should start with you, given we're on uh, home turf. <laughs> is this all about Tahira, the way you see the race unfolding? Um, I think Tahira is very short. Uh, I genuinely do. And, and, and this. Of the two meetings, uh, Leperstown and the Curry, you you are going to have hard luck stories in Leperstown. You always win at this meeting, and and um, as as opposed to the Curry, where the best horse will definitely win each race, almost certainly. Here with thirteen runners, it's going to be you'll need a bit of luck here, and at the price it is, the ground is definitely a, a concern for her. I definitely think she's wants she wants uh, digging the ground to be at her best. Um, even her form, even even the form of winning in Royal Ascot, Remarkey and Sounds of Heaven, those two have been well beaten since. Beaten Meditate in the Irish, in the Irish uh, 1000 guineas, like Meditate reposed you. That is no chance you Meditate, I don't think anyway. I actually think three-year-old fiddies aren't a lot of use. And I, I, I've actually had a few bets in this race. I've gone for the older brigade. I, I can see her sweeping down the outside here. And, and this is a race that, can throw up an odd result as well. I, I was going to go with two horses. I'm going to go with Rogue Millennium each way. I think it, it has a cracking chance. It won Royal Ascot. I think it was at Duke of Cambridge. Disappointed a bit since. But even a second to free wind, like that looks good. The second in York over 10 forings, probably a bit too far for it. Travel like a winner in that race. That gives it a good chance. And another horse I was going to go with was Jumbly. Um, it, that's off since disappointing in Ascot too. But... The ground was against it that day. Back when they've put up so many on here, and that's the kind of thing I could see sweeping down the outside here and maybe nabbing something like Tahira close up. So I'm going to go with Lane Tahira and back in Jumbly each way and Rogue Millennium each way. 
Kiels, we were having a chat about this race earlier, and and I I feel I get the vibe that you're also against a hero. Uh, I'm against I'm against a hero. You know, it, it is based on price. I mean, I absolutely agree with Johnny that the, the, the actual form uh, Asker and the form of Big Meditate is not brilliant. It's not brilliant by any stretch of the imagination. In fact, I would argue that Homeless Songs form last year as a three-year-old was better, uh, and she's eight to one, and I think she's the most ridiculous price of any horse running anywhere tomorrow. Uh, it's just crazy that I mean, okay, they're stable, they're stable mates, and Chris Hayes is onto here, but he's going to be going with a with, with the three-year-old filly on a roll, isn't he? Rather than one mm. coming back from an absence. But you look at Homeless Song when she does when when she does come off a break. She won she won first time out of two. She won first time out of three. She won after a seven-week break in the Irish Guineas by five and a half lengths. Uh, and this year she ran once at uh, uh, here uh, in early in the season to Buckaroo, and she was carrying a big Group One penalty, got beaten neck but on heavy ground, which blunted her speed because she's, she's, a, she's a fast filly. She's officially rated 119, which is a pound better than Tahira. Uh, and she's also officially 10 pound better than, at least than every other filly in the race. And she's eight to one. I think it's absolutely crazy. She, she, obviously, she's a horse that Dermot Wells said that, you know, it, it's a struggle to, to keep her sound, but he's not going to run her unfit if she isn't sound. And that's backed up by her record fresh as well. So, yeah, I think she's served it right out to her. She's just, she's every bit as good as Tahira. You know, a length win from Rem RK is what's, what's all that all about? It's not that special, is it? Like, you know, so yeah, Homeless Songs is a cracking each way bet. I was going to say, have you been <laughs> tapping away on the, on the old uh, machine I've there at the each way price? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I've done, I've done that already. I got greedy, actually. I was searching around to see if they could find a bookmaker offering four places, but they didn't, didn't pop up. <laughs> But no, 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 I do think she's a, she's, a, that is greedy. she's an amazing price. She should be lower. You know, I'd happily back her at four, so I've got to be honest, and she mm. eats. Yeah. Well, 3.20, we then move on to the Royal Bahrain Irish Champion Stakes at Leopardstown. Could this come home to England? Matt, how do they bet? What price is King of Steel? Yeah, well, obviously, it's like a trilogy, isn't it, between Augusta Rodan and King of Steel, but uh, it's really tight at the top. We can't split them. I suppose you can say it's kind of one apiece, really, but the three to one joint favourites, the supplement Alf Flayler is at 11 to two. What are you hearing, Boris and, and the Shadwell team are having? Six to one, one Esto. Don't matter, Frank, the Tory, and the Billy Nashville, 30 to two. I thought our record run against Ace Impact was excellent. I know it didn't really uh, threaten. It was only three quarter lengths and kept Ace Impact going all the way to the line. Of course, the Tucker had him as the art favourite. So I thought Al Rifter was a great one last time out. I thought he was a little bit overpriced. He's got a little bit to find with a group one winning juvenile. But, but as I said earlier, I was really looking to go to Ballydore this weekend. And uh, I put up with Aina Bryan. I'll tell you, Augusta Rodan looked an absolute picture. Let's see what he had to say uh, about the Betford Dog. I just want a quick word on the, the Betford Derby win as well, Augusta Rodan. How's he? Yeah, very happy. Matt, he's. he's uh very well since the King George. Um, uh, was obviously a blip in the King George, but everything has went well. He's done a lot of hard work, and his work is very good. Uh, Rachel rides him every day and very happy with him. Andrew's in charge of him. Um, so, um, yeah, couldn't be happy. Davey is, takes care of him. Um, no, everyone is very happy, so we're looking forward to the weekend. And it's a bit of a trilogy, isn't it? Yes, you beat King of Steel in the Derby. Obviously, what happened at Ascot, so he, he wasn't there. but. Would you fancy to uphold that form from Epsom? Well, hopefully. Obviously, you're never sure, but the Derby is always a serious race, and Epsom is the ultimate test um, of any horse. It's, you have to have stamina, speed, agility, uh, courage. You have to have everything in Epsom, and they came down the straight together. Um, uh, King of Steel got the run up the inside. Uh, Ryan came around the outside on Augustus. Um, two great horses, a great race. Um, there's no uh, race like that ever. Um, it's the ultimate test, and uh, we were so delighted on the day. Kiel's August Rodan, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I, mean, I actually don't care what he looks like. I worry more about what's <laughs> in his head. Uh, because here is, is a horse that's won two derbies and apparently chucked in the towel either side of that in the Guineas and last time in the King George, where he just did not want to know. Mm. Now, you know, the connection was the same way. He didn't like that sticky ground and all that. But he won a heavy ground group one and it wasn't that bad at Ascot anyway. Uh, you know, so I don't get it. It depends what mood he's in. Uh, it really does. But even so... Right. Paddington's the only three-year-old cult to have won a Group One, uh, an all-age Group One in in France, Ireland, Britain, uh, over a mile or further this year. They're not very good, and we've got two horses that are three-year-olds who got beat in a Group One last time, heading the market. And you know, it was even they were even shorter anti-post, but some realities getting into it. But I just think it's a wide-open race. There's officially three pound between six of them uh, on official figures, on racing post figures as well. 
uh, and I'd be taking both of them on. I don't see what is wrong with Al Flayler, because I thought Al Flayler won with a bit in hand when he beat Mike Prospero at York last time. Uh, steady pace, had to come from the back, quicken up really nicely. Um, I can't remember who rode him that day, but um, it might have been Andrea Adzani. Um Put his whip down with 100 yards to go because he just knew he had him had it won. Um, that form's pretty much on a par, of, to my eyes, with what anything else has, has, has done. Six to one, I think it's, I think it's a good value bet. Johnny, what did you make of the Irish champion? Uh, I, I agree with Paul there. I, I don't fancy any of these three-year-olds. Um, I don't matter how anybody can consider back in Augusta Road, and I do not know. I mean, it beaten 100 lengths in a race and its last run. Like, it, it uh, flopped completely in the guineas as well. It definitely has is a horse with an issue. I don't care what they're saying. No horse gets beaten 100, 100 lengths in a race, and it doesn't have a problem. And the same in the guineas, dropped out and over. Then he puts in a, a, a good run in the, in the derby, and... Half a good run in the, in the Irish Derby, but he's probably looking enough to even win that race. So, look, I couldn't have him. King of Steel, it's his first run at 10 furlongs. He's gone from a mile up to a mile and a half. He's like he's well and truly beaten in the King George. He's certainly n not unbeatable. I agree that the three year olds will struggle here. Al Rifa is a horse I'm told that has an issue as well. I, I would definitely wouldn't back that. Um, and I'd say you'll see what kind of an issue it has tomorrow. Um, I was going to go with Nashua, if it's if it recovered from its run in the in the John Monte International. I think getting beat a length by Mustadaf is good enough to win this. I think that kind of level of form, finishing in front of Luxembourg or not Luxembourg and um, Paddington, I think that's good enough to win. It is running quick. It's not. A, it's a pretty quick turnaround, 80, 18 days. But it didn't didn't run in Ascot Nashua, so it might never that be busy a season. Look. It's back up to ten four. That won't that won't be any inconvenience because it's effective at ten and and the mile and and, and this was ten and a half in New York. The other one I was considering was Luxembourg. Um, won the race last year. I even think that kind of level of form, even his form this year, getting beat by Mastodaf in, in in Ascot, well beaten admittedly, that gives him a chance. I was going to go with Nashua and maybe a small saver in Luxembourg. The other one I was considering early on was Alfela, but I just think that beating my Prospero by a half length. He still has a bit to find to get to these other ones. It's not a vintage race, so I'm going to chance Nashua win only and Luxembourg win only. Well, the feature race in England is the Group 1 Haydock Sprint Cup. That comes up at 3.35. And Matt, a short price favourite here in the shape of Shaquille. Yeah, it is. It's a weird make-up. It's a little bit similar to the Matron stakes, but a clear favourite. And then it's kind of any price you like with double figures the rest bar, so you know, it's a great each way make up to the race. But we know all about Shaquille, absolute superstar for Judy Camacho. I've been came campaign brilliantly, still no idea how he managed to win the Commonwealth Cup. But then obviously, put the July Cup to bed as well at Newmarket. He's odds on five to six under James Bill. That's any price you like. Spy catcher, Carbert, then Bill Stream supplemented as 11 to one, same price as Billy Sacred. But I I'm a big fan here of one in Run to Freedom, who I'm not saying he's going to beat Shaquille. But he's four pound better off for less than two legs. Wherever Shaquille finishes, I get to run to freedom not to be too far away. He's been runner up in two group ones over six furlongs. And I think both each way and betting without, run to freedom is the one for me. Henry Candy, you think great sprinters, Galachi, Airwave, Twilight Sun, of course, won this race as well. So he knows exactly what it takes to win a And I thought run to freedom, he's just a forgotten horse. Length and three quarters behind and four pound better off. If he's length and three quarters behind again, I think he'll be in the frame and I say, yeah, I'll be also backing him back about. Undoubtedly, Shaquille is super smart. Only been beaten once so far. That came back as a two-year-old, won the July Cup, Commonwealth Cup, last couple of starts. Kills, I just know what you're like. You're, you're going to try and find something to beat it, aren't you? Uh, I will on the day, but I'm, I'm not really going to try and find anything to beat you here, really, just because I think he is very good. And, you know, the, the, the way he cut through the field at Asker, and then away he made that ground really rapidly at Newmarket last time. He didn't do anything after missing the break, so he's just got so much natural speed. Uh, they've been working on him starting. I mean, if he breaks on target, he'll just thrash a lot of them, won't he? He just seems to be that good, doesn't he? So, you know, I think he's, he's very much the one to beat. I know what I am like, though. When it, comes to, when it comes to looking at the race, I'll back something each way. And it's just in the back of my mind that, you know, earlier in the season, Haydock watered a ridiculous rail, stands rail advantage. For, for the Temple Stakes meeting, and if that happens, he's in stall five, which wouldn't be the right place to be. Uh, and if there is any sort of advantage on the stand side, I thought St Lawrence might be uh, a reasonable alternative in stall 14. Uh, winner at a Wokingham proved he was up to this standard 
uh, when uh, third in the Primoz de Geese last time, actually looked like the winner a, a little way out. So I thought, you know, uh, fast back on faster ground uh, and with what might be an advantage, uh, an advantage, advantageous position, shall I say, um, could be interesting. You know, a couple of those ahead of him, Spycatcher and Millstream, um, really progressive, but all their improvement lately has come on very soft ground, isn't mm. it? And that just makes you worry. So St. Lawrence, each way against Shaquille, but I expect Shaquille to win. Johnny, can you find anything to get near Shaquille? No, I, I can only find that, that look, it's 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 off probably seven weeks. Stable could be going better. I, I was only reading there lately where they went through a, a, a bit of a cold spell. 17 runners odds on in a six furlong race with a with a possibility of a draw bias. I mean, if they split, like if if the, if these hearts stop the split, like you're even money to be on the right side even then, and then you're in trouble. And plus that that, that he can miss the break and that. I mean, I, I, he is unopposable, Shaquille. I couldn't put up anything to beat him. But would I back him? Not in a million years. No, no way in the world would I back him. But but he is on. I could. I I can't nominate anything that can get close to him or even beat him. But I couldn't back him either. Well, let's move on to uh, focus on a couple of races on Sunday from the Curra because uh, we've got two group ones to, to mainly look at there. Uh, we'll start with the 255, and that is the Flying Five. But one of uh, everybody's favourites, Highfield Princess, that runs here. What kind of price is she likely to be, Matt? Yeah, we're probably looking around about six to four, of course. Obviously, uh, second in the non four. She won this race last year, and you're right, she is racing his darling right now. It is, isn't she? So she's in there at around six to four. We've got Brad Sell at three to one, of course, did beat her at Ascot. And then We've got the current specialist, five to one art power. Is that not the great each way back to nothing? Four from four uh, at the for uh, that is his playground. So he's always promised plenty uh, art power. And this might just be his day to shine in group one company. So he could be the fair each way back to nothing, but and a lot of people like to see after the get back to winning ways. Matt, it's like you were listening to our conversation <laughs> earlier, Kills, because you were there going well, this is the most ridiculous price ever. Well, like, yeah, well, it's yeah, not going to be out it, the three. It's certainly, it, it's certainly one of them, isn't it? Why, as a bookmaker, would you give punters their money back for getting Art Power in the first three? Money back and a bit more. Like, you know, because he, you know, he has won four times at the car and he's won by an average of 17 lengths. Two group threes, two, two group, group twos, two group twos. Five. Nothing has got remotely near him. His best form there isn't a million miles away from anything else. His best form anywhere, and, and, and that's the point. And whatever it is, he just loves it. He's also been running very well. He's only beaten two and three quarter lengths by Shaquille in the in July Cup. He wasn't beaten very far when fifth in the Morris de Geese, which is you know is, is a good at least a good half a furlong too far for him in reality because that's six and a half furlongs. So yeah, he's going to run his race, and then you you got high full percent, but just you know, we all love Eiffel Princess, and for good reason. Um, but she has managed to find something to beat at four out of five months this season. Do you feel she's like not, she's not quite as good as not, she was last year? She's not operating at quite the same level, quite as consistently as she, as she did last season. Um, Brad Sell, you can obviously give a chance to. He's, he's very good. Um, he was obviously behind, a little bit behind Highfield Princess. They're very, they're very closely matched. Mm. I don't think... I don't think they're as far ahead as the betting suggests of Art Power when it comes to the Coa. Whatever reason it is, he absolutely loves the place. You can set your watch by him. You know, it was two races this year, four and three quarter lengths, four and a quarter lengths. Like, you know, just powered away in the last furlong and a half. Uh, and, you know, while he's still five to one, you have to back him each way. He'll go off seven to two. He can't stay fives, I'm pretty sure of that. Well, not the way you're tapping <coughs> away with the each way market. <laughs> <laughs> Johnny, what about Highfield Princess? What are your thoughts on her? <laughs> Look, um, this is this is about a like a game of opinions. I, I genuinely think Art Power has no chance. Absolutely, <laughs> <laughs> no. But, <laughs> fantastic. <laughs> Look, I, I watched him. In, he wins in the car, okay, and he won. Uh, and I think he, he, he's he's won in. Did he win in Nace as well the other day? I'm not even sure. But no, he, he's won in the car. He's, he's won three or four times in the Curra. And I've watched him in other places. I watched him in Ascot. I actually had a small few quid in him in Ascot in one of those five followers. It was the, I don't even show this. And I was looking at him and I said, how did this York ever win these races? How is he winning these races in the Curra? <laughs> I saw him running in France there lately. I chanced laying him. He, he had a first horse beat. But I just find that he, when he's running in the Curra, he's been running against donkeys, the Irish horses. They're useless. Absolutely <laughs> useless. And this is a different level. I, I don't think he'll cut it with the likes of Highfield Princess and Brad Sell. I, I do think one of these two will win. And and to be honest with you, I think Hardpower won't be placed myself. 
but I might be wrong and, and maybe Paul will be right and that's the beauty of the game but listen I, t- I think it's between Highfield Princess and Brad I think those two are, are a different level to what's in this race and I'd be leaning towards Highfield Princess because she's won at this track before and won easy too uh, Brad still had a, had a run here last year against that was a little brown bear or whatever you call that horse of Aidan O'Brien's and I think he got hung up in the traps or something and he, 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 he ran bad here anyway but um for that reason, like, there isn't a lot between them on the, on the, on the Nuntarp run, but for that re- reason, there's only a length between them. I'd slightly favour Highfield Princess, but I will be strongly against Ard Power, but I might be wrong. <laughs> Hopefully we have you two on the programme next week. Let's see. <laughs> Let's see. We move on to the Irish Ledger. Where does that come up? That comes up at 4.35 for three-year-olds and upwards. And uh, Matt, how do they bet here? Yeah, it's all about Kiprios, of course, on his return uh, for you know, Brian of wide margin in the Peter Cabra last time we saw him. But that was the last time, over 11 months ago. And I'm guessing he's going to try to retain his side late and then head back to Longshot next month. You're probably looking around about 7-4 to four, uh, for Kipriot. He's following them off by both Elder Elderop and Emily Dickinson. So they're 5-2 to two Elder Elderop. Then 3-1 Emily Dickinson, stable companion, of course. But I think the big hope, and this is not a betting race, but I think the big hope here is that Kipriot is back to something like, or you've still got the same horse after 11 months off. And he can go on and so maybe come back next year and dominate the same division once again. Yeah, Johnny, we'll start with you here because Kiprios last year was fantastic. You know, a, a really exciting stayer. Yeah, look, he, he, at, but at the time of speaking, I don't even know, is, is Ryan Moore riding that or is he riding Emily Dickinson? Is he going to ride Kiprios? I hadn't seen the, I've seen the declaration. I the think The jockey's so. worn down. He's going to ride uh, Kiprios, I think yeah. so. It's difficult because as we're doing this, um, decks have, have only just come through. But um, yeah. But assuming he's riding Kiprios and yes. it has a better chance than Emily Dickinson, like who probably wants softer ground to be at her best. Yeah. But it's a big, it's a big, it's a big, big break for a horse at the same time. It's off like it surely can't be at its best. And I was going to go take a chance in El Doral Dorav. I think if he can't beat these horses, to, to, this is a golden opportunity for him to win. I know he's won the English Saint Legend, but this is a golden opportunity for him because he's running against the filly that probably wants slower ground, and he's and he's running against another horse like Kiprius who hasn't run in nearly around a year anyway. So if he can't beat him tomorrow or Sunday, he never beat him. But but uh, I was going to chance him at five to two. I think Emily Dickinson, the ground is going to be against him no matter who rides it. And look, obviously Kiprius had a, had had a, had a had a bad knockout and. Rarely will a horse be a hundred percent coming back after such a, a layoff. I, I got to go with the elder elder off, but it, like I wouldn't be ramming it down anyone's throat either at the same time. Yeah, Kiels, it's always difficult, isn't it? Eleven, 11 month absence, class horse. It it yeah, it's it, one of those. It becomes you, you, a, a difficult punting I mean, race. If, if, small if field. It, if it comes in here on the back of what it done last season, then any odds against is an absolute gift, isn't it? And mm. but now you think well, I might be taking him on. He hasn't run for years, so I totally agree with Johnny on that score. Uh, and I agree also that Elder Elder Rob is probably the only danger. I think he's a better horse than Emily Dickinson. Emily Dickinson doesn't want that ground. Yeah. You know, on the pick of his form, I mean, he looks he looked like he was going to have a really good season when he finished that that second under a big penalty at York, and he hasn't just gone on. Uh, but I thought there was more to like about um, about last time, even though you know they all gave Quickthorn a ridiculous lead. Uh, I just thought he looked on the way back there. Roger Varian's actually been going a hell of a lot better uh, at this stage of the season than any other. Um, so, yeah, if I was going to have a bet in the race, I would take a chance on Elder Elder of Rennie, but wouldn't be at all surprised if Kipriyos came back and, uh, and carried on where he left off from where he left off. Yeah, it would be nice to see. I was watching something that Aidan did the other day where he was saying, you know, he was very sick and it's, um, it's some achievement to get him back. Well, before we get stuck into our weekend naps, go check out racingpost.com forward slash free bets to see how you may be able to get £200 of free bets for yourself. So best bets of the weekend, Johnny. No jumping. Come on, stick to the flat. What, what are yeah, you? No, what, what are you thinking? I'm going to go with a horse called Colorado Dancer in the 240 in Tursk tomorrow. It, it's belonged to Richard Fay. It, it's look. It looks a kind of a two horse race. It's it's they've divided the maiden there. It, um, it's the horse. It was it finished second to um, in a, in, a, in a race in Sandown, a pretty hot looking maiden, and the fourth horse won yesterday in um, in Salisbury. 
look, it has one horse to beat the top horse for you meant Keeley is right, but I, I think this is slightly better form to be honest. And actually, the, the top horse's form was let down in Salisbury races, so on the basis of that. He'd, he'd probably be favourite. He won't be that short in centre, but I, I'll go with Colorado to answer if I had to pick one horse for the weekend, I think. Brilliant. Good stuff. Matt, what, what are you um, what are you ploughing into this weekend as one horse? Uh, I think it is going to be Bay Bridge, the, the British champion here. He gets weight off for Israel. I know it's a mile and a half, but I don't see any pace on in this race. and He is just the best horse in the race. So uh, it'll be his first win this year. And hopefully he'll be on to uh, retain his title or try and retain his title at Ascon Champions Day. So, yeah, I thought odds against it was pretty tasty. I will be back in Run to Freedom without Shaquille as well. But, yeah, Baybridge, I think, is the one in the open pit Thompson. Kiel's best bet of the weekend. You've I got mean, many, I, haven't I've you? Got, I've got loads. I mean, there, there was a couple of fans here asking, but there's no prices on there yet. And there's no way I'm telling the bookmaker beforehand. So, uh, uh, I'm going to stick <laughs> with Group 1, basically. <laughs> Uh, and go with Homeless Songs, who I genuinely believe is a really, really silly price. I mean, she's so much better than the others, and every bit on a par with Tahira. Uh, and I just think eight to one's a silly price. Well, I'm going to go with Art Power, but I, I got a bit of help from you here. <laughs> <laughs> totally against Johnny. Um, because I'm just going with the theory horses for courses. And Absolutely. sometimes I know they are not great at other places. And it might have beaten absolute dross or donkeys, as you put it, Johnny, um, in Ireland before. But sometimes horses just are so beyond themselves at certain courses. And that seems to be him. Um, and I very much look forward to, uh, to seeing the outcome of the 255. Mind you, now I've said that, if Johnny doesn't like him, he'd probably, Hang on, this he'd is probably stay five to one, wouldn't he? <laughs> <laughs> I won't be wrong. I, I just think when he, when he gets to the Irish races, he's able to boss races and, it, and they give him soft leads and everything. He won't get that against the likes of Highfield Princess and Bradson, I don't think. I have a feeling anyway that he'd be over, but I might be wrong. I've been wrong before. <laughs> We actually just thought homeless songs and art power, both of them overpriced. Not a bad each way double. Yeah. So that could be uh, that Why could not? be my bet for the weekend. Uh, Johnny, what are you up to? You're not going racing, but you're going to be tuned in watching racing. Oh all yeah, weekend. Uh, absolutely. I mean, as I say, this is like the, the the flat equivalent of the Dublin Racing Festival, as far as I'm concerned, is for the Irish the, the two. The, but the the one thing I would say to anyone having a bet. Leperstown, be prepared for hard luck stories in Leperstown. There'll definitely be one or two horses get beat there that should have won. Whereas in the Curra, it's unlikely that'll happen. It, 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 when you get really competitive racing in Leperstown, 12, 13 horse races, when absolutely everything is doing their best, you're going to get messed around. It. And that's why taking short price, I'd be inclined to go for slightly bigger prices on a weekend like this. Brilliant. Well, have a good weekend. Uh, good luck okay. punting, and we will uh, we will speak to you again soon. Um, okay, thanks for your watching. Matt, what are you up to? Plans? Yeah, I'll be tuning to the race and trying to catch up some sleep. It's been a hectic week <laughs> here, there, and everywhere. But yeah, as, uh, I'm going to be sat down, resting up, and taking uh, TV on, switching channels, TVs, iPads, trying to catch all the racing this weekend. It's got a hot crowd as well. It's an incredible weekend. Lovely. Have a good weekend, and thanks for joining us on the programme. Kiels, I don't know why I ask you, because it's the same... Every Friday, and you're doing the same on a Saturday. You go to the same pub, you have a few pints, and you yeah, watch the actually racing. We've got, actually, we've got a different pub now. Funnily enough, so oh. uh, yeah, we've got we have got a little corner booked in it um, for tomorrow. I'm still not 100% sure though, because it's a rugby World Cup, and I can't stand rugby. It's going to be on every other TV. It's <laughs> oh, driving me mad. So well, I might there'll just, just be, be a, this noise I in the might background. Be a miserable git sitting at home uh, instead, but I haven't made a decision yet. OK, it'll be a late call on that. Well, thank you, as always, for coming on the programme. Next week, we will be you're going to be joining me here on Tuesday, and then we're off to well, then we're um, off to, Donny. to Doncaster on Saturday, where we're doing a live programme. What a shout from Doncaster. Of course, it is the St Ledger. We'll see you next week. Good luck punting this weekend. Have a good weekend.